Hello, you might notice that during this video and the different scenes my clothing or appearance will change. This is largely because of my bad back at the moment and I can't always film everything in one go. So I know the continuity is terrible but just have to bear with me until I'm better. Anyway, roll titles! <laughs> And welcome to today's video. Now my name is Kip Hakes and in theory this is going to be a Fix It Friday video but I'm not entirely sure because I don't know if what I've got in here is broken. We shall see. So uh, now you know what it is already from the uh, video title and description and probably thumbnail so you know I can't build up the suspension too much but does it work? That is the question. So uh, I think I bought this from a charity seller, so cheers Windy Way Trust. I'll let you know if there are any problems. Well actually I probably won't, I'll just try and fix them. So what is this? Well it is a Super Nintendo, a SNES, a Super Famicom, depending on where you are in the world. Now I actually owned one of these, no that's a lie, my sister owned one of these. She made sure we knew at all times that she owned it, and if she had enough of us playing with it, we knew we had to stop. So, yes, this is a Super Nintendo. I think it cost me around about £20. I'll put the auction on the screen. I've looked at so many of these recently, I've gone a bit blind. I can't remember exactly how much it was. But they can go for surprisingly high amounts of money. So, um, yeah, this is very well packaged. Annoyingly so, I hate these flipping chip things. Vince likes sending stuff to me in these. And it also means I can't just yeet it off the table. I have to place it down gently. Ugh. Sort of. Go away. Right. Well, here it is. I mean, I've seen worse. Definitely have. Now, for those of you who know, the Super Nintendos do have a tendency to fade and discolour. So we've got some discoloration here. Quite interesting how this bit is discoloured, but the rest of it looks okay, maybe apart from around this power thing. It all feels a bit flappy. Hmm, this is a bit loose. Makes me wonder if someone's been uh, inside this. Don't remember it feeling as flappy there. Let's have a look at the back. Okay, well it doesn't seem to be missing any screws. Does it have a date on it? It's got a 1992 date on it. Super NES PAL control deck. I didn't realise they were called control decks. So um, we've got the extension socket on the back there. And yeah, actually it's quite interesting how the discoloration is only sort of really on this bit. It's quite strange. So yeah, basically, this was sold to me as untested and usually on eBay that means it's broken, but we don't want to tell you it's broken. So, um, mm, if it is broken, that's great because I get to fix it for a Fix It Friday video. If it isn't broken, then it's a bit of a rubbish Fix It Friday video. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Now basically, in the auction, I just won this. I didn't actually have any other Super Nintendo stuff, so I purchased a game. Again, the games can be surprisingly expensive. I got this one cheap largely because the label is faded and it does have some discoloration on the back. I also bought a power brick because most of my power supplies don't do AC. They do DC and this is an AC unit. So uh, yeah, I didn't have an AV cable for it, but I got an SNES to AV card and you can see that, that's on the blue screen at the top there. If this outputs any video, it will be recorded on that screen, hopefully. So uh, yeah, it's all a bit of an unknown and also I don't have a control pad for it. So even if it does work, I can't play with it because I don't have a controller, but Vince is very kind, kindly sending me one to loan to uh, give it a go. Because it is actually quite hard to buy the control panels as well. Don't know why. So, 
connect up the AV. It's been so long since I've uh, hooked up one of these. Because we had a carry case for ours and like we took it wherever we went. We took it on holiday, we took it around to relatives' houses. It just came with us everywhere. So ours was moved around a lot. Okay, now do I just put the cartridge in and power it on? I mean, yeah, this could be a very quick video or it might not be. If it is broken, I don't really know what I'm gonna do because I don't know how to repair these things. But you know, it's a learning experience. This is very wobbly. I don't know what's gone on here. Don't like how wobbly this is. Right, anyway, shall we uh, see if it works? Before I show you if it works, why don't you put in the comments if you think it's going to work? Or if you don't think it's gonna work, what do you think is gonna happen? So yeah, I'll just wait for you to uh, drop in the comments what you think is gonna happen. Actually, while you're doing that, I'll tell you, if you don't already, please subscribe to this channel. It's completely free and helps boost this channel. If you really like this channel, then you can join it, or you can join it as a Patreon. And basically means joining it or joining as a Patreon means you donate a small amount of money to me each month, or you can just do a one-off payment, and that will help this channel grow. I get that money and I can buy stuff like this, or maybe stuff to repair a Super Nintendo. Um, yeah, it really, really helps. But if you can't afford it, that's absolutely fine. Just make sure you hit that subscribe button and maybe press on the bell as well so you get notified of new videos that have gone up. So will this work? Will it not? Let's find out. <gasps> no way! I was not expecting that. Now what's really annoying is I don't have a controller to play it with. That is so cool. Although the AV cable's not up to much, the quality of the picture's not very good. I was expecting slightly better. Well that has uh, made it a very uh, short Fix It Friday video. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure if the controller ports are working because I don't have a controller to test it with but it definitely seems to be working in itself. So that is good. So I think what, instead of like a fix it Friday, this is gonna to have to be a fix up Friday. And I'm going to try and give this a clean to within an inch of its life. I might try and basically bleach this and see what happens and maybe try and see if I can stop the uh, flappiness and then just basically give it a really good clean so it actually becomes like a shining showroom, fresh out of the factory version of itself. Because as I said, apart from this bit here, the discoloration on it is absolutely minimal. And I think it would actually shape up to be all right. It does actually have a few different marks and dings on it, but apart from that, it's fine. So yeah, I think what I'll do now is I'm gonna crack this open and um, give it a good old clean. I'll give the plastics a good soak and clean down. And I'm gonna give this a wee bit of a bleaching and just see what happens. You know, just chuck it in some Domestos for a bit. See if I can make the yellowness go away. Okay, so that's a good start. So we're not, we don't need to fix anything, but we certainly can make this look a lot, lot better. There's got some pen on it there. Yeah, okay. I like cleaning. Let's give this Mother Hubbard a clean. I've got the appropriate screwdriver. I think it is a 4.5 game bit or something like that. It says, 4 point, it says G 4.5 on it, so it sounds about right. And it does seem to fit the screw. So um, let's unscrew it. I don't think there's any kind of warranty seal on these, so I don't know if someone's been in it before me. If you like old consoles, then I'd suggest you have a little look at my Game Boy Fix It Friday video that I released a few weeks ago. I had a faulty Game Boy, and you can see if I fixed it or not. And actually that is going to have a bit of a restore as well. I've finally got all the bits in for that. So um, that's going to look 
amazing. I'm looking forward to filming that. So uh, yeah, hit that subscribe button and keep your eyes peeled for that. I suppose it's a good start that all the screws are here. Oh wow. I'm not sure if this has been apart before. I mean, you'd hope that whoever took it apart actually cleaned it. That is gross. So I'm just sort of visualizing my way around it all and how best to remove it. So I think my plan is I'm gonna take everything out of the case and then I'll be able to give that a proper, proper wash and then I can clean all the boards and Ugh. Just a warning, I've never disassembled one of these before, so I'm completely weeing into the dark as to how to do it. Should be fairly self-explanatory, but you just don't know. I'm going to spring out. Easy when you know how. It just comes out like that. So we've got these plastic clips here and here that connect this very front part onto the back part of the plastic. Perfect. This part is a piece that is, is exposed to the world and this is where the controllers plug into but I can give this a bit of a easier clean. There seems to be a hair there. I hope it's an eyelash but it looks a bit too long to be an eyelash. So we need a Phillips to go round and take things off. Take this minging switch off first. Right, I think all the screws are slightly different, so I've got to pay attention. While I'm unscrewing this, uh, let's have a massive Shout out to all of those who have joined this channel, both through YouTube and Patreon. Hello, this is VoiceOver Kip here, not to be confused with VoiceOver Steve. I don't sing or anything like that. Maybe I will do when I get to 10,000 subscribers. We will see. Anyway, massive, massive love to our Kip mentor, and that is David Elphick. Thank you so much for your support, David, and your hoodies always look good on you. And then we must say a massive, massive thank you to Becky and Ellis the DJ for being Kip Nutters. You both are wonderful and so supportive. And then we've got some Kip lovers in the form of Bella Webster, Richard R. Blaster, and no, that's it. And then coming up the rear, not like that, we've got Roberta Gorethamson, Stez Dix Fix, and Dean Ball. They are our early birds. And then just a quick cheeky shout out to No Name, Matt Lovies, Big Up Yourself, JRC, Jim Hook, Thor Z, Robert A and Tim Salt. Thank you so much all for your support. Anyway, enough of this. Let's uh, go back to not voiceover Kip. The board is out. Looks actually in quite good nick, really. There we go, so this is the uh, scummy cartridge slot and shield. And then this is the main board, so that doesn't look too bad at all, really. Well, yeah, the case is pretty gross, um, but it's not terrible. Okay, so that's ready to have a good old bath. You're gonna give it a proper clean, you really need to get under the buttons. So that is Mr. Reset out. 
customers eject out. Right, so I'm gonna take this off, hopefully. Oh, okay. Just a case of undoing these little clips. Everywhere. Nice. Use a plastic spudger actually. There we go. Perfection. I know it seems daft going to this length to take things apart, but it's not broken, so I don't really need to put much more time into it than giving it a good clean. There we go. Yeah, I mean, you can see maybe all the crumbs and stuff that are down there. Ah, look. There you go, and that piece just lifts out. I'm gonna give this a bit of a bleach and just see if that makes any difference. It might make this fade a little bit, but we'll just give it a go. It's gotta be worth a shot. So I think over time this plastic reacts to sunlight and uh, causes it to discolor. So yeah, if I can give that a bit of a sort out, that'll be all right, but by taking it apart to the lengths that we have, you can get right into these little bits down here where all the grub is and clean it out. And look, didn't even know that. There we go, the power button just lifts straight out. Excellent. So look, we can get rid of all the finger grub there. Oh, oh that's the light diffuser for the LED. The only part we've got to take off now is this. And then this is just completely plastic. I mean, part of me wants to whack it in the dishwasher, but I have a feeling it just will melt. Maybe if I can find like a proper ratty one, I can give that a go one time. Will it dishwash? No, it won't. Another lengthy hair there. Someone must have really, really loved this snez. So we've got a load of plastics ready for a bath. So let's go give them a bloody bath. Well, we've got the case looking pretty clean, I think. So we just need to look at the board. Now it's not terrible, but especially around the cartridge slot, it's a big gums up. It looks like someone's been eating food and putting cartridges in. So I thought I'd give that a quick clean and then we can reassemble it. And to clean this, I'm just using a bit of IPA soaked onto a cotton bud and just gently taking away the dirt.
Now IPA would just evaporate very quickly so it's not going to make anything short on the board. It will just disappear of its own volition. I have to say a massive, massive thank you to Vince. The uh, controller that he lended me has arrived today, so we'll actually be able to test the controller works because otherwise it will be a proper full-on fix-it video. I'm sure it'll be okay. Yeah, that's pretty much done. So now we need to move on to this segment, which is where the cartridges actually go. And um, let's make sure you can see that. That is disgusting, isn't it? So this heat shield guy sort of lifts up and pops off. So that gives us full access. I mean, this is all sticky. It's disgusting. Something that I've got on my wish list is a little uh, USB powered compressor that can basically blow away dirt and crud. I think it's a bit better for the environment than using like cans of air and stuff. So I might treat myself to one of those at some point just make getting the dirt out a little easier. I am actually surprised at how the game read with all this crud in here. It is absolutely caked and I mean I think some of the contacts are actually covered. Yeah, a little compressor to blow down here would be very helpful. Never mind, we'll do the best we can do. As I said, it was working before, so anything we do is going to be an improvement on how it was. It's actually been quite a fun console to disassemble. It comes apart really nicely. And I think if you're going to start tinkering with consoles, I think this is a very good place to start because there's lots of information online about issues. But yeah, it's just relatively straightforward. You don't need any crazy specialist tools to get it to bits. Yeah, I mean, that's looking better, isn't it? Oh, I was going to give the switch a quick clean. I got the worst of the rubbish off. Give this guy a bit of a clean. Just remember this bit. Now this guy wasn't something that I could stick in the uh, washing up bowl. Give it a little clean. I must tell you that the uh, new merch is probably going to be out by the time you're watching this. So if you go to merch.kipakes.tv, you'll see You'll be taken to the Puddult store where um, you can buy my merch. And I'm actually getting the samples of it, hopefully tomorrow or Monday, depending on Royal Mail strikes or not. So that's very exciting. Right, okay. That's clean. So now comes a fun bit of trying to remember how it all goes together. It definitely seems to be a good start. So uh, these are the cleaned parts. I did stick this guy in a bit of bleach and I think it has helped slightly I'm going to have to do some more researching on retro brighting and all that kind of stuff because I think it could do work. This bit really lets the whole console down. It's really in lovely condition now it's had a good wash. But yeah, that's a bit of a mess. There we go. Right, so I can put this on. Now these little metal guys went in here. I 
I've used these uh, sections on here correctly, so it should make it easier for me to decode where everything should go. Now something that's really good for going, putting screws, especially back into plastic, is if you turn it the wrong way, and then you'll do a little click, and then you turn it in the right way, and that means it threads back on the threads that were originally there, rather than making new threads. That makes sense. I think it makes sense. It's really hard to sort of remember how it all goes together. Can go in afterwards. <laughs> Amazing. Can you spot the mistake I made when I was assembling that last bit? It's not the buttons, it's something else. If you can spot it, put it in the comments and we'll see if you're right in a little bit. Right, so resets can plop in there, inject. Forgotten something. I've forgotten guy that there we go. Little diffuser guy. Goes. Oh no. <sighs> Got to take this all apart again because I forgot the diffuser guy. Perfect. I can't remember what type of screw went in there. Let's check my work. Okay, so I finally sussed out where I went wrong. Basically, these longer silver screws go one on this side and one on this side. The shorter yellow ones hold in the power switch. We're nearly there now. I mean, I hope it's still working after all this. I really hope that I haven't ended up breaking it. Right, I think what I'm gonna do, instead of putting the bottom screws on, because this is the first time I've ever done one of these, and I'm not, I'm fairly confident I'm not entirely confident. I'm going to um, I'm going to say putting the bottom screws in until the end because if there's something wrong or something's not working properly, although I think everything should be. Um, yeah, I'd rather be able to just lift that off and have a little look inside. But I'm really pleased with how it's turned out after a bit of a clean. Hang on, I've got to put this on. It really is looking pretty good. Considering, was this out around about 92? Yeah, 92. It looks pretty good. It really does. I'm really happy with it. You know, as I said, I might try and do something with this in the future, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the Game Boy, because that needs a bit of 
retro writing so I'm going to do a bit of research. If anyone can point me in any directions of good videos on retro writing that will give me an idea on how to do it, that would be really helpful. Because aside from this, this is actually pretty good. I mean, I wouldn't say it's mint, factory fresh, but it's not that far away. Not that far at all. So um, yeah, this is, uh, this is a start of a collection, hopefully. What should I look at next? See, so, yeah, part of me wants to go, go for stuff that I owned, or my sister owned, but I kind of want a uh, NES, the original guy. Didn't actually own one of those, my cousins did. And because I saw my cousins a lot when I was growing up, I used to play on that a fair bit. So yeah, I might do an NES. We shall see. Right. Okay, let me just grab the controller from Vince. Right. Plug in AV. Plug in power. And then plug in game. Moment of truth, it will be on that monitor there behind me and I'll put it in this corner, that, that corner. So weird. Yeah, I'll put it up in that corner if it's what the showing on the screen. Are we ready? Three, two, one. <gasps> oh my God, it works. <laughs> oh my God. That is so cool. Oh my God, right. Well, shall we see if the controller works? I'm gonna have to spin round. I'm not being rude and putting my back to you. <gasps> it is yonks since I've played this. That goes to show how long it's been. Get the token. Yes, right. Duck. Oh, I don't need to duck, I'm little. I'm so happy that works. There we go, our semi-restored Super Nintendo. I think I need a better cable for the HDMI output, maybe like something that does the RGB, because that just does seem to be composite quality, so it's not as good quality as it could be. But what a result, what a good start. So yeah, if you want to tell me what consoles you'd like to maybe see me try and repair, or or fix up a little bit and give a good tidy to, then do let me know in the comments. I've really, really enjoyed this one. And even though I didn't have to fix anything specifically, it's just been nice cleaning it up and having a bit of a old school memory come back to me. Right, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, but for now, it's game over.